can think of your company, you have obviously HR, you have financial control and finance, you have marketing, you have sales probably, you have manufacturing, different division, different, well, project management should be one of those functions that is permanent within the organization. That's why sometimes personally, I think what's wrong with PMO is the word O, okay? Because it should be a project management department. But the word project management department might not be good enough because the department might be responsible or a business line, okay? Maybe then it goes back to the question Ali you raised earlier, which is centralized. And uh, not necessarily always a good idea, okay? Depend on the organization. You definitely want to have a corporate responsibility for project management across the organization to institute some kind of consistency system. But then different organizations might need to have their own project management unit. But some, somebody, in any organization, you probably have financial control that set the policies, the governance, the rules, okay? And then other departments will execute that. HR, you have somebody in HR responsible for corporate HR, decision-making top ben benefit, but then each manager is responsible to execute HR. The same kind of thing we need in project management, which is not really there in many organizations yet. Who is responsible for corporate project management? And then you have different division and different unit might have aspect, but as, they, as long as they link back to uh, the corporate level organization. Now, this is a proposal, obviously, not many organizations accept maybe what I just said, which is fine. In management and project management, is no right answer or a single right answer. There are different approaches, and we have our own opinion, and others, I'm sure, they have their own opinion, which might be supporting or contradicting. Is an organization, what I say, organizational unit. Yes, the bottom line, it is a project management function. So it yeah. be a function performed by different units. Yes. So your opinion, is the first or the second or the No, I mean, they're not, okay, I'm glad you asked a question. They don't, don't meant to be contradictory. What I was defer, referring to the word unit here is it's a, a unit, if it has to be a unit or units, not a person. Okay, that's I was trying to distinguish. It is the idea, it is more than a person. That's one part. Now, within an organization, small organization, you probably have the unit and a function would mean the same thing. In a bigger organization, in a bigger organization, you could have multiple organization units related to project management, centralized or decentralized. Okay? I'll give you an example and I'll come back. Maybe we can talk about your situation. I used to work for Exxon Chemical in the US. We have a division called, uh, when we started Exxon, uh, I was started with Exxon, we used to have a three business line within the company. Technology division. We have a division called Basic Chemical, another division called Olefin, another division called something else. Okay? Within each division, we will have a project management unit. So when I was hired with Exxon Chemical back 21 years ago, I joined, I was technically part of what we call the Basic Chemical Business Unit. Two years later or a year later when I was with Exxon, they changed, they said no, we're going to centralize project management. And they create another division instead of the three top business production type of division, they created divisions, they called it central project management. And now all the project management people belong there. So they pulled us from the different operating unit, if you wish, and they put us part of the centralized project management. And when they did this, they created offices around the world because we provide support around the world. So we had an office in France, we had an office in Louisiana and Texas and Singapore. We have different offices to support the project in the area locally. But we belong, we were centralized, each branch, each division around the world report to the centralized organization. Okay, that was another approach. Okay. Another approach you could have, which is you could have a corporate PMO, okay, and you can have multiple PMO with different with the business unit, not necessarily reporting to the corporate PMO, maybe only at a dash line relationship, more for top governance structure, thing of that nature. So from that perspective, again, I'm not giving you a straight answer because there isn't none. In my view, it's, uh, it's wrong to have one size fits all. It all depends on the culture. And in basic, in Exxon Chemical, for capital project and the billions of dollars, it makes sense to capitalize and centralize project management across the whole organization. But actually it wasn't. It was only for capital projects. IT people, uh, marketing, HR, we had nothing to do with them. Okay. Now project management is becoming more popular in marketing and finance and, and HR and other areas as well. 
Now, does it have to be linked to the capital project? Maybe there is no benefit there. Maybe there is a lot of benefit. You have a different opinion to offer? Please do. Yes, project management is more of a function that could exist in one centralized division and with many units across the whole organization, or it could be units that are belonging to the business, to the business line. Either way. I, I, if they're not centralized, it's good to have some center to kind of collaborate and coordinate if it doesn't control or managing control. Okay. Uh, and, and I guess this is the last comment I was having here. There could be one more than one PMO in an organization, which is perfectly uh, acceptable. Now, typically, uh, this is a slide I, I skipped yesterday because we had the same event in Abu Dhabi, and, uh, and finally somebody came back and said, why did you skip it? I want to talk about this. Now, when we talk about PMO, is that basically there could be many forms of PMO and many roles and function of PMOs. Again, I don't want to convert this into a PMO discussion, but quickly, as it relates, uh, what's relevant here, PMO could start that its role, nothing more than just to come up with reports. The role of the PMO is just reporting. Management wants to collect data. But ideally, and it maybe stays there forever, but ideally for us, in our opinion, for the PMO to survive and to really reach great benefit for the company, it has to evolve. Not necessarily into all of this, but at least to be more involved in managing project or maybe putting more structure, uh, or maybe a methodology such as this or such as that to put for the company. I'm not saying adopt this, I'm saying you develop your own. Okay? And often enough, what you see in the region over here, PMO are not really doing any of that stuff. And as a result, and also global research, uh, Luke, I think, mentioned some PMOs are killed after two years. Why? Maybe because they are put here. So there's only reporting. So some people are perceiving as police force. They're not being very effective. They collect data and they collect data report, which is good. Nothing wrong with that. But they are not actively involved in setting up systems and policies and procedures for managing projects. So what's happening, the project management function, now is probably uh, highly reported, which is quite valuable, but not enough. And as a result, that basically the perception and expectation doesn't mean reality. Ideally, if we can move into a higher level, which where the PMO is involved in things like training support and things like career management, uh, maybe even coordinating project, or maybe even as far as managing project and program. And many top big organizations around the world that are capital project, actually they are here. Okay? <clears throat> if you take any uh, industrial facility, usually probably you have the same thing, and a lot of companies, they do have their project management department. They don't even call them PMOs. They call them project management department, and the project manager report to that department. Now, our view is, as you can move from left to right, organizational maturity increase. So that's basically um, trying to link to define maturity, and what I've done so far is defined organizational project management, Define the role of PMO in that, and the next now I come back to let's define maturity. What is maturity? How much and how do we apply knowledge through the practices we have in the organization? So maturity is measured usually in relationship to the practices within the organization. The term came from IT industry with the capability maturity model. I used to think it's index, but today I was corrected to integration uh, as a way we can measure how good are the practices within an organization in the area of IT, or in this case, about project management. So how mature are the practices? And usually, we measure it on a scale of one to five, with one being uh, basically probably no system exists at all, or maybe at an awareness level, versus level five that might refer to a center of excellence. Uh, there are different models for project management. Unfortunately, there is not one single dominant model in the world that we can use in order to assess maturity of an organization or the maturity of the practices of project management within an organization. Any question on this? Are we okay with that? Okay. Now, why do we need maturity? 
Some quotation here, I, unfortunately, I don't know the source, but some of the stuff that's float around the internet often enough. There is never enough time to do it right the first time. But there is always enough time to go back and do it again. Now, this is more of a quality principle, okay? But the same thing apply. And when we were discussing this yesterday, they said, well, we don't have enough time to plan. I'm sure some of you have heard this. That's exactly the same thing here. We don't have enough time to plan. It will take longer if we plan. I mean, the idea is the opposite. It doesn't take longer. Yes, you might take longer time to plan, but the idea, if you have a better plan, okay, then your execution time is going to be shrunk. Hopefully, okay, by more time than you spent on planning. So overall result, it will be shorter time. Okay? And that's what's important. I was, I'm in, uh, back, my background is oil and gas, and we do benchmarking in the oil and gas sector. And I know one company, one time they were benchmarking their self against the global, uh, basically looking at global companies and you benchmark. How does companies look? And when we look for project management, we look at the things that is called engineering, procurement, and construction. So basically, once you start in detail engineering all the way to construction, and you look at that cycle time, how long it takes. Companies in the region over here were doing basically about in the in, uh, global average, about the average, not better, not worse, but about average. And obviously for the executive of that company, they were feeling good about it. But you know what that means? It's measuring only from here to here. When we do that, what we call EPC benchmarking, we are only measuring the project implementation, which is engineering to construction is only between gate five and six. But if you look at the organization, it really starts here. Now when they start looking at that, 